All right, well, let's first start off by talking about how did you get chosen for this? Uh, I got chosen in part because I said yes. Uh, back in 2007, uh, there was a worldwide symposium on artificial pancreas technology. At that point, nobody had yet lived on an artificial pancreas. My endocrinologist and some of the lead researchers from the University of Virginia were there, and they were notified that they were going to be able to be, we were going to support them in doing the first human trials of this. And so they, my doctor turned to me and said, you should do this trial. <laughs> and I said, okay. I said, yes. Um, um, Are you scared? You know, so that, no, not really. I, you know, um, so let me clarify. So I, so I ended up saying yes. Um, I got to do this trial fundamentally, though, because I received my care at the University of Virginia, and my endocrinologist is the lead researcher, and so it was, you know, I was, I was already a patient. I worked for JDF. I knew what it was all about. So, I mean, the, you know, and I said yes. Um, that first time, back in 2007, they were looking for 16 people to do the trial, and I said yes in August, and they had me in by September doing the trial. It took them all the way to the following April to find the 16th person to do the trial. So it's, it, these, these trials, enrollment can take a long time sometimes. Um, and so saying yes is actually a good thing, and we need more people to say yes. What was the trial like? Walk us through the process. Um, so each time you do the trial, so you asked the question, was I afraid? And, and the answer is no, I wasn't, because um, you're getting the best care you could ever get in your whole life. Uh, you, you know, it's not, you're not standing there alone, you're standing there with your endocrinologist and engineers and nurses and medical technicians and experts who are there to make sure that the safety of all of this is exactly where it needs to be and that we're not putting anybody into a dangerous situation. So I probably had more people watching me and my blood sugars and making sure I was okay than at any other time in my life. So no, I really wasn't particularly afraid and I certainly wasn't alone. Um, each time that I do the trial, you do two admissions. And one admission is a control. So you, you're going in and you're kind of wearing all the stuff and you're going through all the same motions against a clock, doing all the things based on a, a schedule. Um, but the system isn't running the show. It's just kind of watching. Then you come back again and it turns on and it is running the show, and again, you're doing everything on that same timeline, eating the same things at the exact same time the food is weighed out, so on and so forth, so it's at least initially. Um, so each time you do the trial, you do it two times. One time is to say, what's it like when he runs the show himself? And the next one is to say, what does it look like when the artificial pancreas system takes over and runs the show? Tell us what it's doing right now. Hold it up. So right now, the system is running in simulation mode. But it's just alarmed because it's showing that on the low blood sugar side, I've gone to a red light. And it, it, the system is saying, I've gone low. And it's alerting me to the fact that I've gone low so that I can step in and do something. But you're so not really hooked up right this, now. I'm not hooked up right now. This is just a simulation of, of me and, and, and data that's running in here. And had I gone in the real world, if this was me and I was going low, I would be eating something right now to make sure that I, I don't go any lower. It's notified me at 100. So it's, it's told me well before I get there that it says I'm going to go low. You see this arrow pointing down, dropping? That means I'm going down fast. And you see that it shows the numbers that I'm at 100 right now. And this two stoplights here, this is the low blood sugar side. This is the high blood sugar side. And right now, it's gone to red light. So if this was green, it would mean everything was fine. But it's gone to red saying, you're going low, do something. And that's what that alarm was. It was saying, you need to do something. Step in. Pay attention. Um, a couple of things, so I can actually tell it that I've just treated my low blood sugar, so that the system knows that I just ate something, and that gives it a little bit more information to work with. Because this is also a cell phone, right? it also connects to the, to the internet, right, to the web, which allows for remote monitoring. So for all the parents out there who have a child living with type 1 who worry about where is my child's blood sugar, is they high or they low, they could literally be pulling it up on their smartphone and seeing exactly where their child is. They could be getting an alert. When you start to move these systems into smartphones, you start to create a whole bunch of other options that we have never had before. Wow. So tell me, just hold it up. And, so that's the artificial pancreas? So the artificial pancreas is three things. It's an insulin pump, which lots of people 
I've seen before, right? And a continuous glucose sensor. So that's a little sensor that's here in the back of my arm that's continuously pumping out information about where my blood sugars are. And then it's a smartphone, in this case, that allows the pump and the sensor to work together automatically, or it helps to start to automate the control between the pump and the sensor. How's that? Is that simple enough? So the phone actually controls the pump and the sensor? It's the brains. It takes the data feed from the sensor and it gives instructions to the pump. So in some ways, you could start to describe this as giving smart pumps, right? We're starting to give brains to pumps because before this, or what we have right today, the pumps have very minimal IQ, <laughs> very, very few brains. Um, we're really trying to start making these things smart technologies. Okay. We can have a smart grid, we can have smart pumps. I think, you know, most people would think if they hear the word artificial pancreas, you're thinking major surgery. It's, a, it's something that's inserted inside your body like a pacemaker or no. artificial hip. Or no. So in this case, it's all existing technologies that are worn outside the body, being brought together for the first time with a pocket computer to run them. So when you were hooked up, uh, you really didn't have to, I know you were in a hospital setting, but mm -hmm. you were not. Oh, so you, you I, well, we didn't really finish that story, so let okay. me sort of continue yeah. out. So in 2007, when I first did this, it's, say, these were called, so trials go through different phases. And the very first phase ones are all safety trials. And safety is always paramount in all human testing. Whenever you're doing human testing, you're trying to be very safe and, and make sure that you're not endangering a person. But the very first stage in particular, it's all about safety. Because no one had ever tried to automate this before. No one had ever tried to have a sensor and a pump work together and, and help to start to automate insulin delivery. And so, you, you know, insulin has the ability to kill people. So you do need to know that you're doing something that isn't going to kill somebody. So the first time, 2007, and again in 2008, and in 2009, and 2010, it was all in the hospital. It was under very close supervision. Um, because of a lot of hard work that a lot of wonderful people did at JDRF, um, and work that the FDA did with us, um, a year ago, December 1st, we got guidance that allowed for the first time um, all of this research to leave the hospital and go into the real world testing. So that's now phase two is moving to the next stage of, of testing. That's where we are right now. And so that's where we are right now. So but what I just finished doing in December was literally um, leaving the hospital and going out and living in the real world for three days with an artificial pancreas. Now it's going to alarm again. But the number has gone to 104. It's, so the pulling back has started to work. Mm -hmm. And I also told her that I'd... So for three days you did that? Yes. So you... I mean, was, what was different about it? What was more normal about it? It's very hard to explain the difference. Um, I was talking a little bit earlier with, with uh, Mary Lynn. And one way that I would describe this is... Um, the first 20 minutes of The Wizard of Oz is in black and white, right? And Dorothy falls in a pigsty and has to be put in bed, and everybody's looking at her around a bed. So the first times I was doing this, I was in the hospital. Everybody is around me. I'm in the bed. They're looking at me. Um, and, then, and then I'm in, in Oz, and, uh, and everything is in Technicolor. And I got to go out in the real world uh, wearing regular clothes. I went and got had a, a Five Guys cheeseburger and french fries. I had hot fudge sundae. I took long walks. I did whatever I wanted to do wearing normal clothes. It's pretty awesomely different, right? I mean, it's, it's night and day difference. It was really like going, opening a door, and stepping out into a world that was full of color. Really? Yeah. So you can eat whatever you want, do whatever you want to do? Um, because it's going to overcompensate and fix things as you go? I want to be careful how I answer that. OK. Um, but you maybe not have Because I didn't go bananas, and nobody would. You shouldn't, although I'm sure people will. And I did go a little bananas. I mean, I ate a hot fudge sundae and a grilled That's what I was cheeseburger. You, ate one thing. you don't look like a guy who eats that very often. I don't. I got, the last time I had a cheeseburger was probably five years ago. So it was, I don't. But um, <laughs> it has much to do with, with the fact that it was really close by and we needed to get, everyone needed to have some dinner. Um, 
The reason why I want to be careful how I answer that is that I don't want to give people the impression that this is immediately doing everything for you, right? So I want to, I mean, there's a couple points I want to cover there. Um, 